All right, let's play some more Netrunner. On the left, there's me, Kate Mac McCaffrey, the digital tinker, the shaper. On the right, we have the Wayland Consortium, building a better world. Doing a little mulligan here. I had a shitty opening hand with a whole bunch of notorieties in it. Those are good, but can't score them right off the get-go. Need something better than that. Corporation, pretty standard opening, two ice, and a hedge fund, big money, gets an extra credit from his identity. Standard opening on my side as well, using the test run to get a magnum opus, use it three times, and then put it back on top of the deck. I had a little hard time doing math, it was late at night. <laughs> But I do have the correct number of credits. You spend three, you get six for a net positive of three. Spending your whole turn to get three credits is actually, you know, not the greatest, but the magnum opus is now on top of your deck. I draw it to protect it. Not that, I mean, not that it was unsafe where it was. Um, I actually, yeah, that's right, I decided not to draw it, because it's actually less safe in my hand if there were to be some net or meat damage. I installed these two all noit nighters uh, that I didn't really need. The idea was to combo them with notoriety, uh, to score multiple notorieties in one turn, but I wanted, they were the only cards in my hand I really cared about protecting in case the ice was a neural katana, which it wasn't, but it was an enigma, uh, so I lost the rest of my turn. See, I wanted to face check all those ice, uh, you know, before putting any of my cards in a vulnerable position. I guess the all-nighters actually were kind of vulnerable. See, I'm face checking the rest of the ice here because they're resources, so if I had run into uh, something that gave me a tag, uh, they might have gotten destroyed. Okay, now I finally install that magnum opus for four using Kate's ability. And I'm always drawing lots of cards here to make sure my hand is full uh, in case the Scorched Earth comes out of nowhere. There's a hostile takeover. Probably my favorite agenda in the whole game, which gives me a very nice bad publicity. But it also means the corporation can now easily res Archer. So I'm pretty sure one of those cards in that remote server is an archer. Uh, but I want to go to R&D, because there's nothing in that server yet. So I use this special order to go and find my code gate breaker, the key master. I kind of like special order better than test run for getting icebreakers. I mean, test run will put the icebreaker on the table, so you can run that turn immediately, but then the next turn, you really lose a lot having to draw it and then play it again. This is all on the same turn. You draw it, install it, and then start using it. I run with the Enigma. I do have a click remaining. I don't want to lose that click, so I, uh, I spent the two credits and the bad publicity. I scored a one-pointer. False lead. Got lucky. Not bad take two credits and let my turn end. Corporation's got a lot of cards. I'm pretty sure HQ is loaded. Um, but you know, he could have Snare in there or something. Uh, I'd much rather take my chances with uh, R&D. It's something I can harass every turn. So yeah, keep my hand full of cards in case Scorched Earth comes. He definitely needs two to kill me. And dangerously, with my last click, I run R&D. And I get lucky again. Posted bounty, another point. Super lucky. Probably didn't deserve that point. But, you know, left R&D unprotected. Um, yeah, I was there, I was discussing how I had actually spent an unnecessary credit running R&D uh, because it was my last click. Uh, so I didn't need to break the lose-a-click subroutine. But meanwhile, I let him score an atlas with two tokens. So now I'm really worried about the economy. 
right? He has five credits. I have two. There could be a sea source, double scorch. If he just has one, you know, any one of those three cards in his hand, he can go and get the other two with the Atlas counters to kill me. If I make a successful run and my economy is too weak after that run. So basically now, anytime I make a run, I have to have a strong economy afterwards. Uh, or I can pretty much assume I'm going to die. Also, you know, uh, I have to assume he has two more hostile takeovers in his deck, which he can score out of hand with no additional assistance. Uh, so if he gets to five points, he's going to win the game in two turns. Uh, I had too many cards in my hand. So I installed the Underworld Context, even though I don't have enough Link to make it work yet, just to get it on the table, so I didn't have to discard any of my other cards. And I'm saying, no, 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 why are you blocking up R&D? No, I really wanted to get in there. Uh, my R&D running days are over. some money, install another Underworld Context, just to get it out of my hand. Draw a card. So I probably should have drawn the card before playing the Underworld Context, because, you know, what if you draw a card that you want to play immediately? This is a mistake I make a lot, is I have a card in my hand I want to play, and then I know I'm going to replenish that card after playing it. What I should really do is draw a card and then play, because maybe that card is even better. And either way, I know I'm going to play a card, so my hand, I won't have to discard anything. Better to act with more information by drawing first. Alright, he's icing up the archives, which is making me think there's an agenda in there. And I really love to run archives when there's face-down cards there all the time. See here, I drew the card first uh, before playing. I wisened up. And I installed the snowball. Perfect for running HQ. Which only has a wall of static right now. But I can't I don't really want to run just yet. I hope I don't run just yet. Because, again, the sea source, which can only be used after a successful run, my economy is way lower than his. Alright, so now that I've played the Snowball, he iced up HQ. See, the mistake I made was installing the Snowball when I couldn't use it immediately. Right? It's basically, he doesn't have to put an ice there until I play a Snowball. I should have played the Snowball on the turn that I was going to run HQ. You know. But there you have it. Okay, so I finally get the Toll Booth. I mean, <laughs> the Toolbox, which is going to give me the link needed for the uh, Underworld Contacts to get free credits. It's going to give me the memory, and of course, both the two memory it provides itself, and also the extra link causes the key master to take up no memory. So it's pretty much a mandatory card for this uh, for this rig to work. Took a while to get it, uh, but the score is two three. So a fast advance might have ruined me, but his advance was not that fast. I take 8 credits because I was so poor, and now my rig is pretty much complete. I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, he installs advance advances. That's telling me that's an agenda back there. Right? I think I made a joke about it being a ghost branch. Which it could have been. Um, but yeah, how am I going to get that? One of the, you know, the face down card is probably Shadow or Ice Wall. Unlikely to be Hadrian's. One of the two cards behind it is almost definitely Archer. He does have a hostile takeover to sacrifice to that Archer. I do not have any Sentry Breakers whatsoever. Um, at least not on the table. If I don't run there right now, I'm 
probably going to be he's going to score that. The fact that he advanced it twice, it's probably a Project Atlas. Uh, or it could be a posted bounty that's going to tag me and kill me. So here I install a Femme Fatale, which costs 8. Right, because I'm Kate, I get a one credit discount. And I put the token, I have a one out of two shot, I'm convinced one of those is Archer. Uh, I have a one out of two shot of guessing correctly. They could both be Archers, uh, in all reality. I hate having to play this guessing game, but, uh, I mean, one out of two shot is not too bad. If there were three ice there... You know, then I'd really be looking for some infiltration or something. Alright, so then I actually cheated here, I noticed in the video. I should have paid two credits for that personal touch because I already used Kate's ability for the um, Femme Fatale. Here I go a little bit crazy uh, using the All Nighter and the other All Nighter to get my clicks back. Basically, because my economy is so low here, I only have three credits. I can't run the server with only three, even with the Femme Fatale. Um, and I do want to have money left over after the run, in case of Seasource, even though he'll probably spend a lot of credits resing the ice. So here's the crazy overkill, is I take six credits, right? I run dangerously with the last click, and use a stim hack. Right, this was you'll see in a second, this was way too much. That was enough resources to probably run that server two or even three times. Uh, and I use them all at once. Of course I'm pretty much gonna get in no matter what, but I could have saved the stim hack or the all nighters for some other time. So he reses the ice wall. I use the bad publicity and some and the stim hack credits with the snowball to break that. He does not res the femmed ice. It's not worth, you know, what it would cost him. He does not res the last one either. I'm pretty sure it's a trap, but I go for it and I am rewarded for my bravery with a project atlas and I take a brain damage. It's a femme fatale, and I'm actually happy to see that go in the trash. Um, all those stim hack credits, <laughs> I didn't use them. That was a waste of a stim hack. I could have used it later. But yeah, the femme fatale I like to see in the trash because uh, I could just test run it out of there. I'm probably not going to want to pay nine credits to install that directly. Uh, you can see I also forgot to use my toolbox credits during that run, so my tiny bit of cheating for um, installing that personal touch, I guess didn't matter, all, you know. But yeah, you gotta be careful about Kate's ability. You can only use it once per turn. And in fact, sometimes you can get caught if you install a hardware or program, say off of a personal workshop, uh, even though you didn't pay for that or get your bonus, it's still, that was the first program or hardware that you installed that turn. So you, that, you, know, you don't get Kate's ability to reduce the cost on uh, another program or hardware you install later on the turn. But yeah, I've remembered now my toolbox credits. Put them up there. Let's see what he's gonna do. So he is installs and advances twice. Now I'm in a position where it's like I sorta almost have to run. I'm ahead in the score, 4-3, to three, but he has the two Atlas counters. If he gets even more Atlas counters, I could be in deep crap. If it's a posted bounty, he could trash my Underworld contacts. Uh, it's not really a good situation at all. I do have a lot of credits. I could run. But the thing that really worries me is that I do not have a lot of cards in my hand, so he would only need a single Scorch to take me out. So 
So what I'm going to do, rather than run, is draw cards. So I draw a card, and draw another one. There's a diesel, which really convinces me that I should just draw all the way up. I have one click remaining, and I use it to touch the Femme Fatale again, this time correctly for one credit. So if he scores it and destroys my Underworld Contacts, or scorches me once, you know, I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> Probably living dangerously here. He advances once more and doesn't score, which tells me it's either Atlas or a trap. I'm okay with that. He commercializes uh, and gets $4, which is great for me. I get two free credits from Underworld Contacts. I know that agenda is either Atlas or a trap. Uh, but what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run his other servers. Maybe I'll get some points. Maybe he'll spend some of his credits resing those other ice on HQ and R&D. Uh, thus, he won't have enough credits to res the ice in his big server. If I can get him below four, he can't res an archer. So he pretty much has to choose whether to defend those or whether to defend his big one. My femme is at strength 4, so it's pretty powerful. I run HQ. I get really lucky with a security force. So now I have 6 points, and that pretty much determines the rest of my turn. I'm going to run R&D. There's a data raven. I mean, normally, I don't want to take that tag, because I'll die. But here, I'm going to take it anyway. Because once I'm at six points, Notoriety can win the game. So if I can break into R&D and then break into Archives, it's going to work out well. So I take the tag from the Data Raven, I keep going. Uh, my Fem is at Strength 4, I use the Bad Publicity to break the Data Raven subroutine. I've already used those uh, Toolbox credits on the HQ run. I use two credits there right, to, uh, to break the enigma. I see a card in R&D. It's no good. I run archives. He does not res. The card there is just an ice. And then I play notoriety. And that's seven points. GG.